Forget for databases is a 24 by 7 enterprise monitoring solution which allows you to effectively monitor your databases, featuring resource monitoring capabilities with powerful analysis toolset to enable fast problem resolution and proactively fix issues before they become a real problem. Here you can see the global view which allows you to see all instances monitored by Foglight. Foglight supports Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, SAP ASC, MySQL, Postgres and MongoDB. The overview dashboard is the starting point for getting to the root cause of the issues as it covers all aspects of instance activity at a glance. A multi-dimensional historical analysis of your instance workload allows a deep dive investigation of a single dimension or a combination of dimensions. PI comes with a full dimension stack. Here we can see all SQL statements executed by program toad and running by user cells. We can also see the statistics associated with each dimension, as well as the associated wait events. The I.O. analysis feature allows you to investigate I.O. related statistics and weight events for all the dimensions. You can start the I.O. investigation with the top objects, files or disks. In the left pane, we can see a drill down to all the SQL statements that access the order line table. Now we can see all the I.O. related statistics for the objects. So far, we've covered the basic database monitoring capabilities. Now let's review the virtualization and storage aspects of the product. Okay, so here we are back at the overview dashboard and we can see the column where we see the host that Foglight has automatically detected where the VMs are. So this is an additional agent that talks to vCenter to pull all the stats that we need into Foglight and then we can correlate that information with the information we've got from the VMs that the SQL or the Oracle databases live on. So when we're on the database dashboard, we see the detected VM and it's all highlighted and we can just click into that to investigate either if it's a physical host, we go to a physical dashboard, or if it's a virtual host, we'll go to the VM dashboard. And this will give us the overall view and the overall health of a VM and also notice the corresponding ESX information, data store, uh, cluster, etc. in the same dashboard. We can also see the CPU and data store utilization over time uh, and notice that they've got a bit of a peak coming through, uh, which is also correlated with the baseline information. So basically, looking back over time, we would expect the CPU to be utilization to be between you know, 10 and 40% but it's a lot higher, and also at data utilization is a lot higher as well. Um, drilling into the data store uh, dashboard also gives us a view of performance at the LUN level. So we can see the, uh, here we can see all the uh, interested data in the LUNs looking at throughput and latency, and also the correlated uh, VM offenders on the same LUN. Viewing the topology, we also get a view of the connected and possibly impacted VMs. Notice each icon has associated severity warnings, and this would also give an indication of some other underlying problems uh, that are on, the, on the related VMs. The IOPS of each VM can be shown here as well, uh, and this will also give us a view of any issues that we want to go and investigate. So let's have a look at a live demonstration of this. Okay, in this Foglet environment, we have three instances two SQL Server instances and one Oracle instance. Uh, we have the workload column, and as you can see, the Oracle environment is the most loaded instance. It has five average active sessions. So if we want to further drill down and see the uh, IO activity and the CPU and the top SQLs, we can go to SQL PI. So here we see the breakdown of the resource consumption. We can go to uh, last eight hours to see historical information. As you can see, the load started today in around 11 a.m. So we can see the top SQL statements and the other dimensions as well. Now let's say we want to focus on the I/O related dimensions. So we have the files, the disks, and the objects. So these are the top files for the instance. We can see that uh, the most uh, I/O related uh, file is the temp file. 
and uh, we can also see the disks. So in this case, we have only one disk, so all the files reside on the same logical disk. And you know, behind the scene, the storage can, uh, the underlying storage can host other uh, data files of other instances as well. So an interesting question is how this instance is affected by other instances which use the same underlying storage, the same uh, RAID array. So this is the next topic, and uh, Martin will show us how the forgetful databases can also um, work together with the forget storage and virtualization solutions in order to understand how the instance and how the VM is being impacted by the other VMs in this uh, uh, underlying storage. Yeah, great. So as we've drilled down to the VM, there's various different metrics that we can, we can uh, pick up from these particular dashboards. This is a, a sort of summary view where, as we've mentioned, you can see there are ex existing alarms on the ESX host, uh, but as far as like the, the resource pools and the data stores, they're all green. Uh, and we can see that there are other, uh, if we want to see other VMs on, on the same host, we can just click across to the ESX and then see all the other VMs on there. But when we click on monitor, for example, we'll get some more granular information because one of the things that might mislead us is looking at, at uh, statistics from the guest that don't actually stack up against the information we're getting from uh, VMware. So for example here, rather than looking at a percentage, we'll get things like composite CPU, CPU utilization, and we can see the utilization of the four processes there, the cores uh, for that particular VM. Uh, and uh, alarms for things like data out and data in if there is some unusual activity that isn't normal for this time of day. Uh, also might be useful to check is things like the network topology. We might want to check the, uh, the, the utilization and the packet loss ac across the network. That could be something worth uh, checking. Uh, but also things like the processes in the guests. So even though we don't get this information from vSphere, we can actually create agents that will remote into the, the guest, whether it's uh, Windows or uh, Linux, uh, and pull, the, pull up the top CPU processes. Uh, and as expected, the top CPU process here is Oracle, but that could also be some other offending process that's running on that VM might be giving us a misleading bit of information. So having been able to track the, uh, the top memory and top CPU processes there is quite important. When we look at something like storage then, this will also give us an insight into the, uh, the performance uh, of the, uh, the LUNs connected to this particular VM. Uh, and we can see quite clearly here, although we've got data store one, LUN two is the one with the most I.O. Uh, and the most latency. Uh, and if we just scroll down here on the right hand side, we can see the, the disk extents uh, and the target data store list. Uh, but what I'm interested in is investigating a little bit more about the, uh, the latency, uh, and we could do that either at the ESX level or at the LUN level here by drilling into the LUN, uh, and this is where we, we mentioned earlier on that we can see that the related topology objects uh, for this particular LUN. We've actually got two hosts connected, uh, four VMs in total, and what we're interested in is any correlated alarms that we're seeing. Uh, and if we need to uh, drill in for more information about any of this, like for example, if we wanted to go and investigate this particular array, we can go away and do that. Uh, or if we wanted to check uh, problems to do with connectivity, uh, we can do that there or the disk extents here. So there's lots of drill throughs and drill downs to enable you to go away and look at uh, all the different bits of information. Uh, so back on the, uh, looking at the performance here, uh, we can see uh, over the last hour the amount of, uh, of uh, throughput uh, and the latency that we're seeing uh, for this particular uh, LUN. And what we're also interested in here is the other VMs that might be competing uh, on that same LUN. So we, we started this investigation looking at uh, the, uh, uh, the VM3 here with the amount of I.O. there, uh, but we've also got some activity coming through from a, another VM. So that's another area where we might want to then go off and investigate uh, that other VM to see what that's doing. Um, and I'll just explain also, even though we, we drilled into storage and then we've, we've jumped across to a different VM, we've still got these tabs across the top where we can pull out additional information. Uh, you know, I showed you processes 
Uh, this particular VM is running SQL Server, so it might be useful to be able to see uh, some high-level information about that SQL instance, uh, considering that you know, I've got a different hat on now, it might be a VMware administrator wanting to know a little bit about the, 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 uh, the SQL instance as opposed to the, the detail that we get as a DBA. Uh, and also from here, we can, again, view the SAN topology, see how this particular VM is also connected to LUN1 as well as LUN2, uh, looking at any icons that show us any warning messages, but most importantly, the ability to drill into the SAN data paths. Because now what this is doing is showing us down to the, uh, the storage layer, the, the latency that we see at LUN level, and then the latency that we see at the disk extent level, and we can see the competing I.O. ESX level as well as the, at the LUN level. So that's also allowing us to see, you know, if we've got things spread across different LUNs, how they're all competing, whether they're all balanced, and whether they've all got uh, you know, similar levels of latency. When we're at this particular level as well, we might want to utilize the storage performance feature that comes with Foglight for storage. So we can drill into this particular feature, pick the VM that we're interested in, and then perform the analysis. And this will just look at some of the numbers that has been collected uh, and allow us to investigate that further. When we see this particular dashboard, uh, what we're able to do is, is view the, uh, the, the, the data store there. That's not the particular one that we're interested in. It's this one lower down where we can look at the, the VM latency uh, versus, tip, versus threshold. So again, we can see over time, over the last hour, uh, where it, it, we've got various levels of uh, you know, breaking the thresholds. And then we've got the latency versus typical and here we've got VM workload versus typical as well. So that also gives us a good uh, drill down into that area. And, and all these things can uh, be drilled in to see how they compare to the baseline as well, which could be important to see how that differs from what we'd normally expect to see. So perhaps this workload we're seeing on this particular VM uh, does look to be abnormal. It's also causing us a problem with our Oracle instance. So if we just drill back up, we can then investigate this further. So by going across to the database tab, uh, we can pick the particular instance that we're interested in, go across to the, uh, the, 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 the PI information, and, and as we demonstrated at the Oracle level, we're doing a similar thing now to understand, well, if we've got a lot of I.O., what is causing that I.O.? You know, let's drill down to that particular level of detail. So when we look at the weight events, we can see we've got a mixture of problems here. We've got some log weight, we've got some CPU usage, and we've also got some network weight. And each of these can be investigated either together or separately. Uh, for example, if we're looking at workload uh, as for I.O. analysis, we can see the disks that are involved, and we could correlate that to understanding what disks are connected to uh, each particular LUN. Uh, and we can look at the files, uh, that are associated with this workload, uh, and, and uh, you know, if I just hover over that, you can see that's the, the particular database that's associated with that, or it could be the objects that you want to have a look. So we've got a table here called I/O pressure that's most of that workload's associated with it. So if that object is the problem, then the idea here is that you could, for example, just drill down and have a look at the SQL statements that are, that are actually targeting that particular table, uh, or which database that activity is in, or which user is causing that particular problem, okay? Um, or, look, if we go back up to the top, you could just look at the overall workload of this particular database, uh, or, or the, 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 on this particular instance, and we can see we've got a mixture of activity. There's the, uh, a lot of insert statements there. We've got a lot of executions of inserts into that table, and we've also got some corresponding select statements from another table here. So again, looking at understanding the, the spread of the workload, we, we can drill down th through these dimensions. Uh, we could see what uh, files are affected by this particular activity. We already know that. And then if we drill back up to the uh, select star, we could do a similar thing by looking at the objects 
that are affected by uh, that particular activity or what files that's associated with uh, or, uh, or the disks. Uh, and then we can look into the database dimension to see uh, you know, what programs are running this SQL uh, to understand what's going on there as well. So you can see there as a summary that we've gone down through, through the, the virtual layer into the storage and then back up again. And in that way, we could then detect where we've got, for example, uh, you know, conflicting types of activity that we need to uh, understand and move. We might want to move this particular uh, instance or this particular database across to another host or, or at least look at if it was CPU pressure, we could do that, or if it's some sort of uh, latency or I.O. related issue, then we could look at uh, how we would address that, for example, by moving the tables onto a different LUN or, or partitioning or something like that.